Dear students, hope you all will be fine. And today in the series of circuit analysis, we will study mesh analysis. Mesh analysis is a circuit solving technique. With the help of mesh current, we can find branch current and using branch currents, we can find voltages across various elements. In the method of nodal analysis, we were using node voltages as a circuit variables and solving the equation for node voltages give us currents passing through the elements. Where in case of mesh analysis, we will be using mesh currents to find currents passing through various elements and then using Ohm's law, we can find voltages across the elements. So in case, case of mesh analysis, our unknown variable will be the mesh current. A little review from last chapter that a loop is a closed path with no node passed more than once, which means that a loop will be a closed path which will start from a node, moves through various nodes without repeating any another and will end on the starting node. Now, a mesh is a closed path or loop which doesn't contain any another loop within it. Or mesh is known as independent loop. Now for the circuit in the given figure, if you consider the path starting from node A, then node B, then node E, then to node F, and finally it will ends on node A. Or if you consider another closed path which will start from B, then to node C, then to node D, then to node E, and again it will end on node B, it will be another closed path. Now we have another closed loop which will start from node A, then to node B, then to node C, then to node D, then to node E, and finally at node F, and it will end on node A. This will be our outer loop. Now among these three loops, the outer loop is not the independent loop because it contains two subloops where first and second loops are independent loops or mesh. Dear students, now mesh analysis is not quite as general as nodal analysis was because mesh analysis is only applicable to planar circuits. Planar circuits are the one which can be drawn in a plane with no branches crossing over another. Otherwise, it will be a non-planar one. Now, if you look at the figure A, this represents a planar circuit because we have all the branches in a one plane and no branch is crossing over another one. Now, if you look at the figure B, where you will observe that there is a crossing over of branches. So figure, a, so figure A represent a planar circuit while figure B represent a non-planar circuit. Students, we know that a planar circuit is a circuit which don't have any crossover branches. Sometimes we may come across a circuit which apparently may have crossover branches. Now, if you redraw the circuit, you may find the same circuit which won't have any cross any crossover branches. So the same non-planar circuit by redrawing can be converted into a planar circuit. Now if you look at the figure A which shows a circuit with crossing branches, now redrawing the same circuit give us a planar circuit which don't have any crossover branches. Now students, Rules or steps to be followed for the mesh analysis are first of all identify the number of meshes and assign mesh current to each one. Like if you have n meshes then assign i1, i2, i3 up to in to, e to each mesh. In second step apply KVL to each mesh and find out KVL equation. Then with the help of Ohm's law express the voltages in the form of mesh currents. After this, solve the simultaneous set of equation for the mesh currents, which are the system variables for mesh analysis. And here note down that if you have any circuit with n number of nodes and b number of branches and 
the circuit have l independent loops or meshes then the number of independent loops number of branches minus number of nodes plus 1 or we can say that corresponding to these l independent loops we will have l independent simultaneous equation which are required to be solved for mesh analysis Now in the given circuit we will apply mesh analysis by following the steps studied in last slide. Apparently in the given circuit we have three loops where two of them are independent loop or we can say that we have two meshes and the outer one is not the independent loop, independent loop. So in the mesh analysis we have to find out two equation for the given circuit. Now to each of these meshes we will assign mesh current small i1 and small i2 and will define their direction which can be either clockwise or anticlockwise. Also note down that two meshes are, isolated, are isolated then branch current or the current through each element in a mesh or loop is equal to the mesh current. Here mesh currents are represented by small i1 and small i2 where branch currents or the current through element are represented by capital I1 capital I, capital I2 and capital I3. Also, the current through element or the branch current is equal to the algebraic sum of mesh currents. Here, capital I1 is equal to small i1 or capital I2 equals to small i2. Now, the current through the common element which is R3 will be equal to capital I3 is equal to the difference of mesh current I1 and I2 with the help of KCL at node B. Now as a second step of mesh analysis we will apply we will apply KVL. So KVL at loop first to which we have assigned mesh current I1 its KVL equation will be minus V1 plus VR1 and plus VR3 equals 0. Now KVL at, KVL at second mesh to which we have assigned mesh current I2, its KVL equation will be VR2 plus V2 minus VR3 equal 0. Now as a second part of second step of mesh analysis, in this we have to change given voltages into mesh current form. Now if you look at equation of first mesh which is minus V1 plus VR1 plus VR1 plus VR3 equals 0. Now we know that V1 is a voltage of the voltage source where VR1 is the voltage drop across R1 resistor. So in terms of mesh current VR1 will be equal to R1 plus small i1 plus small i1 where small i1 is the current through the R1 and similarly VR3 will be equal to R3 into capital I3 where from KCL we know that capital I3 is equal to small i1 minus small i2 minus small i2. On simplification we will get first equation of mesh analysis. Now again if you look at second mesh equation which is VR2 plus V2 minus VR3 equals 0 and now using and now using Ohm's law and transforming voltages in the form of mesh currents and on simplification we will get equation B which is the second equation of mesh analysis. Now as a third step of mesh analysis we have to solve this simultaneous equation to get mesh currents. Here equation A and equation B are written which you can solve with any method of calculus. Either it can be grammar rule or using substitution method or any method which is or any method which is easier for you. Once you get the values of mesh currents, you can find the branch currents or you can also find the voltages across various elements like VR1, VR2 or VR3 in this case. 
Now for the circuit given, in the example, you have to find branch currents capital I1, capital I2 and capital I3 with the help of mesh analysis. Now to apply mesh analysis, first of all we have to find meshes. In this case we have two, we have two meshes and we will assign small i1 and small i2 mesh current and also will define their direction. As a second step, we will apply KVL to each mesh and transform KVL equation in terms of mesh current with the help of Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Now, we will apply KVL at first step and we will get equation minus 15 plus 5i1 plus 10 into i1 minus i2 plus 10 volt equals 0. On simplification, we will obtain 3i1 minus 3i1 minus 2i2 equal 1. Similarly, applying KVL at second mesh, we obtain 6i2 plus 4i2 plus 10 into i2 minus i1 minus 10 volt equal 0. And simplifying this equation, we, equation, we will obtain 20i2 minus 10i1 equals 10 or 2i2 minus i1 equal 1. As the circuit have two meshes, so we have to find two simultaneous equation. And these equations are represented by equation A and equation A and equation B. Now as a third step, we have to solve these two equations for mesh currents I1 and I2. And on simplification, we have mesh current 1 equals 1 ampere and also the mesh current 2 is equal to 1 ampere equal to 1 ampere now we have to find the branch currents the branch current capital i1 equals to mesh current 1 which is 1 ampere the branch current 2 is equal to mesh current 2 which is also 1 ampere and the branch current i3 equals to difference of mesh current mesh current 1 and mesh current 2 in this case branch current 3 will be equal to 0 as mesh current Now in the next example, for the given system, you have to find current I0 with the help of mesh analysis. This time, if you look at the circuit, we have three meshes with two voltage sources, where one is independent voltage source and another one is dependent voltage source. This source. And the voltage of dependent voltage source is dependent on current I0. Now we know that we have three meshes so we will assign current small i1, small i2 and small i3 to each mesh as a first step as a first step and also will define the direction of current which can be either clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now as a second step we have to apply KVL to each of these meshes and we have to use Ohm's law to transform voltage equation in terms of mesh current mesh currents. Now if we apply KVL at mesh 1, we will have minus 24 plus 10 into I1 minus I2 plus 12 into I1 minus I3 equals 0. And on simplification, we will obtain 11 I1 minus 5 I2 minus 6 I3, minus 6 I3 equals 0, which will be the first equation of the system. Similarly, applying KVL at mesh 2, we will have 24i2 plus 4 into i2 minus i3 plus 10 into i2 minus i1 equals 0. On simplification, we will, we will have minus 5i1 plus 19i2 minus 2i3 equals 0 and this will be the second equation of the system. Now applying KVL at mesh 3, we will have 4i0 plus 12 into i3 minus i1 plus 4 into, into I3 minus I2 equals 0. Now if we apply KCL at point A, we will have small i1 equals small i2 plus capital I0. Or solving, we will have capital I0 equals small i1 minus small i2. Substituting, the, substituting this value in the previous equation, we will replace 4 I0 by 
4 into i1 minus i2 or on simplification we will have minus i1 minus i2 plus 2 i3 equals 0. Now as a third step or third step of mesh analysis we have to solve this equation represented by a, b and c by any method of calculus which is easier for you. On solving mesh current 1 equals 2.25 ampere, mesh current 2 equals 0.75 ampere, ampere and the mesh current 3 equals 1.5 amperes. Now the capital I naught or the current passing through 10 ohm resistor equals difference of mesh current 1 and mesh current 2 or small i1 minus small i2 and, and substituting the values of small i1 and small i2 we have and thanks for watching this video.